it's Margot, and today I'm bringing you the confounding story of the green children of Woolpit. So if you're ready to tackle a medieval mystery, keep watching. This may sound like a folktale because it is, but folktales often have some basis in reality, and this one actually seems fairly plausible. I'm sure you're thinking, Margot, children aren't green. Well, children aren't usually green, but hear me out. Our story begins in the English town of Woolpit, an ancient village in Suffolk, during the reign of King Stephen in the mid-12th century. This was a long, tumultuous period of English history, a time of civil war between England and Normandy, referred to as the Anarchy. But this story isn't really about all of that hullabaloo. Well, maybe a little bit. At this time, Woolpit or Wolf Pit in Old English, named after the old pits for luring and ensnaring wolves that the town was known for, was an agriculturally productive and densely populated rural English town. In around the year 1150 at harvest time, some villagers working in the fields discovered two young children, a girl and a boy, emerging from the wolf pits, which would have been about a couple hundred square feet in area and probably at least twice as tall as the children. This was unusual, but even more unusual was the children's appearance. They both had green skin and were said to have been acting nervously, dressed in strange clothing and speaking gibberish. The children were taken to the home of Sir Richard de Caen, about six miles away from Woolpit. De Caen offered them food, but they refused to eat. After a few days, the children came across some green beans in de Caen's garden, which they ate. This was the only food they'd eat for quite some time. Over time, Decon convinced the children to try other foods, which eventually led to their green complexion, fading to a normal shade of human. It was eventually learned that the children were siblings. It's believed the children possibly lived with Richard Decon for years, before the boy, who appeared to be the younger of the two, became ill and died. The girl survived and would come to be named Agnes. I've been unable to find any other details about the boy's illness, how long he actually lived, or what his name would have been. It is said that the boy passed away shortly after the children were baptized in a local church, so I'd assume that indicates he was given a name, and I'm pretty sure they would have also already had names before arriving in Woolpit. According to an account of the time, Agnes grew up as a servant in the Decon home, where she was described as very wanton and impudent which probably means that Decon just couldn't control her the way he wanted to. She eventually became integrated into English society and married a royal official from King's Lynn, which I believe would have been known as Bishop's Lynn at the time, about 40 miles from Woolpit. Her husband's name was Richard Barr. According to one report, the couple had at least one child. As Agnes had slowly learned to speak English, she was of course questioned about where she and her brother had come from, and why their skin was once green. In one version of the story, Agnes responded with, We are inhabitants of the land of St. Martin, who is regarded with peculiar veneration in the country which gave us birth. We are ignorant of how we arrived here. We only remember this that on a certain day, when we were feeding our father's flocks in the fields, we heard a great sound such as we are now accustomed to hear at St. Edmund's, when the bells are chiming, and whilst listening to the sound in admiration, we became on a sudden, as it were, entranced, and found ourselves among you in the fields where you were reaping. The sun does not rise upon our countrymen, our land is little cheered by its beams, we are contented with the twilight, which among you precedes the sunrise or follows the sunset. Moreover, a certain luminous country is seen not far distant from ours, and divided from it by a very considerable river. So basically, Agnes said that she and her brother came from a land called St. Martin's, where the sun would never shine and it was always twilight. The siblings had been herding their father's sheep when they heard loud bells ringing. The next thing they knew, they found themselves at the bottom of a wolf pit. Another report of the story states that the children had followed the flock into the cave and become disoriented. They were led out of the cave by the sound of bells, but found themselves emerging into Woolpit rather than St. Martin's where they'd come from. The stories often describe St. Martin's as being located underground, where everything's green. Over the centuries, scholars have come up with several possible explanations for why the children may have had a green tint to their skin and where they actually came from. Theory number one is that the children suffered from hypochromic anemia, also known as chlorosis or green sickness. 
This condition is caused by poor diet, which turns a person's skin green. After eating a healthier amount of food, the skin returns back to normal. Theory number two is arsenic poisoning. The theory states that the children had arsenic poisoning and were left to die near the Norfolk-Suffolk border. Arsenic can cause some skin discoloration. Theory number three is that they were the children of Flemish immigrants. During the 12th century, many Flemish people were persecuted by King Henry II and immigrated to England. It's believed the children's parents could have been killed in the Battle of Fornham in 1173, leaving them orphaned. Fornham St. Martin was actually a nearby village, separated from Woolpit by a river and just a few miles from Bury St. Edmunds, where loud bells often chimed. This theory raises the possibility that the children may have entered an underground mine passage in the area, surviving on a very poor diet while wandering on their own, and eventually emerged into Woolpit by following the sound of the bells. But this doesn't really add up for a couple reasons. For one, it's believed the children arrived in Woolpit around the year 1150, which was two decades prior to the Battle of Fornham. Of course, the 1150 timeline could be off, since we really know nothing about this case for sure. The other reason this one seems a bit off is that Richard de Conn, being an educated person, would most likely have recognized Flemish, if that was the language the children were speaking. Theory number four, because why not, is that the children had extraterrestrial origins. In 1621, the English scholar Robert Burton hypothesized the green children fell from heaven. Not surprisingly, this idea actually gained some popularity over the years. And theory number five is one I alluded to earlier that's been around ever since the children were discovered near the wolf pits, that they actually arrived from an underground world where everything and everyone just happened to be green. Historians have stitched the narrative of the green children of Woolpit together from two somewhat reliable written reports, those of Ralph of Cogsall and William of Newbury. Neither man had first-hand experience with the green children, and their accounts differ somewhat in the details, but the overall story is the same. Ralph was a sixth abbot of Cogshall who lived not far from Woolpit and claimed to have repeatedly heard the story from Richard de Conn himself. He wrote about it in the Chronicon Anglicarum in around the year 1189. At the time of Ralph's writing, Agnes was said to have still been alive and well in King's Lynn. William of Newbury was a monk and historian whose retelling of the story of the green children was published in Historia Rerum Anglicarum in the year 1220. It reportedly came from many trustworthy sources. The story of the green children of Woolpit would go on to inspire poets, novelists, and even operas right up until present day, with new twists being added for each new generation. Nobody can really be sure if this story is truth or fiction, but it certainly intrigued listeners for the last nine centuries. That's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this story and will come back for more. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and bring your friends, family, COVID pod, cult members, and visible friends or enemies. And if you have any opinions on this topic or any other stories you'd like to hear about, leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.